Hello again, it's time for book review. Uh, this time it's going to be about one called Head First Java. This is kind of an old book, I would say mid 2010s. I don't know how to say that, maybe uh, 2005 to 2010. And the second edition, I believe, is the newest one. And it's still relevant. Um, it's really good, I, I think. Um, it's made by multiple authors. The authors were, I'm going to go to the table of contents, but here's the picture, and it's made by multiple authors, so not just these two right here, Kathy Sierra and Bert Bates. They have something called the Head First series. So you will see Head First Java, Head First, uh, you can put Python, right? Head First uh, HTML, CSS. Let me see if I just put Head First, you could see them. Um, so head first JavaScript, head first learning to code for the first time, uh, head first HTML, CSS, head first design patterns, PMP, basic object oriented, agile, SQL, statistics. I want to do the statistics ones actually, but um, they are in the same format. Let's see if I could get a, uh, yeah, you see how there's a picture here and she's talking about something. Well, they take an abstract idea in programming, turn it into a meme, and explain it in the meme. So uh, they do this throughout the whole book. You'll, you'll have a picture like on every page, and they're trying to do something about how you learn. So the authors, they are learning theorists. I'm not too sure how to say it, but in their biographies, um, they are people who study the art of learning, right? They, they teach how to learn faster, how to learn programming faster. And what they've discovered and learned in their university classes and whatever workshops they did, I was reading the biography, I was a while back, so they learned it from somewhere, that if you use pictures, uh, metaphors, memes, and uh, explain things in a fun way and make people laugh and show pictures more, of everything and play games with it, they kind of gamify each chapter at the end, then um, the learning will be faster, more permanent, and deeper. That's what they believe and that's how they wrote the book. And as you could kind of see, it, that's the way it is, but um, they're called head first because they teach the concepts first. So every single, um, every single chapter they explain all the concepts, they do some mini games or gamify the concepts, and then they give you a programming problem for you to review all the concepts. So it's called head first because they teach you the concepts to your head first, right? And that's the whole head first series. They do the exact same thing for Python, HTML, Go, Swift, um, and they teach just the core with this Java one and the Python one and maybe a few external libraries if they're really important um, but they believe that if you want to learn a language you have to learn the standard libraries, the core libraries, the ones that come with the language not made by a random person or a random organization uh, because the core is reused more than learning a library initially and that library that's by someone else that may be using the core Java, the core Python, the core C++, the core C, core Swift, you know what I'm trying to say? So, um, the only issues that I see with this is that the uh, con conceptual learning is like 20 pages each, man. So, um, when there's a chapter, they'll teach you object-oriented programming. Then you have to read 20 whole pages of uh, object-oriented programming. And if you read through it, it takes a while. It, it really does. I, I would sometimes get a little tired reading the whole chapter. Uh, let's see if we could zoom into them. So look at the pages on these chapters. Uh, number one, an introduction to programming is 26 pages. Object-oriented programming, 22 pages. Uh, the idea of libraries, explaining libraries, uh, that's like 40 pages right there. And you have to read through all of that. 
and then you do the game, and then you do the exercise. Um, so I think when I was reading it, that it was too many concepts in my head, and I was learning so fast, in a good way, I was learning so fast that I didn't have enough time to make it more permanent in my mind. So I had to make up my own exercises at the end of every chapter to really get into it. Another issue with this, besides the each chapter being too long, is that the games, they, they're hard to do. I mean, not because they're hard to actually complete or do, like, figuring it out. It's just you have to cut out the paper and the book, and you have to um, cut out more little papers or scan it and then use the scan um, because you're supposed to cut out the paper and do the games with the paper. Like, uh, I'll show you. Maybe I, maybe I could show it to you. Um, so there are these games where you have, to, like here's one. You go to the left and you write on the right, right? And you write the answer. Um, and you have to do it in your book. Uh, I had to print this and or, or scan it and print it to not to keep my book empty so I could practice another time later. See, they show you the answer, but oh, here we go. No, wait, that's not it. Uh, come on, show me the game. The game. All right. Well, I'm probably not gonna find it quickly enough. So they'll have a square, and they will have blocks of code and they'll tell you uh, try to find out if this number is even and they'll show you four different blocks of code and you have to organize it by cutting out the blocks of code and putting it in a little box and I wouldn't want to do that to my book I want to keep those exercises pristine so I could do them again later right so I could review the book in like two years why not it's good but um, it's just a hassle you know but it could be worth it, right? Just It's just a little hassle. I mean, you got the book if you buy it. Um, last thing, uh, the exercises, they're too short. Um, they're, it's not enough, in my opinion. I think, I think it's better to make up your own two or three exercises at the end of each chapter and just kind of play around and toy with the code for maybe 20, 30 minutes. And then take a break and come back because every single chapter just blows. It blew my mind because uh, it's it's a really good introduction. This if uh, if you were in a university, this would be maybe two semesters worth of information in the book. And it took me, I would say, three or four weeks to get through. But I was doing it for maybe one to three hours a day, reading through this book. And then when I took my Java class at school, I got ninety eight because I was studying so much Java and it was a core Java class. So it was great. I mean, the core of Java is not going to change much quickly. You know, it will change, but not fast enough to where when you read this and within the same year you take Java University or boot camp, there's there's they're going to be applicable. It's core Java. It's going to be the same ish over time, right? It's a, it's going to change, but just not that quick. So that's that's head first Java. Uh, you remember the pictures, it's all about concepts, and there are a whole bunch of books like this, different series. There's the Crash Course series, uh, there's the Meyer series, um, and I've, I've tried the Meyer series, but not the Crash Course one. So maybe I'll talk about that one, the Myers next. So let's see how long I ran. Uh, eight minutes, nine minutes, okay. Uh, oh, the last, the last question. Is it good? Yes, you can. Um, I recommend buying it, reading through it, even if. And oh yes, um, Head First Java was one of their first books, so they were very enthusiastic when they wrote it. Uh, if I read their other Head First books, and this is one of the best of their whole books, like all of the series, uh, because they go super in depth. They do it well. They do the pictures are hilarious. Um, so. If you are in the introduction to programming and you want to do Java, head first is exactly where you need to go. Um, but just remember the downsides, long chapters, short exercises, uh, bulky, gamifying, the whole thing. Um, but this was made with a lot of love, with a lot of uh, effort, and it was done well, this, this head first series book of the whole series. 
So uh, I recommend it. I did it even though I'm a Python type of dude. I like Python because I was told over and over, you got to read this book because it explains and breaks down um, how most programming work languages work. And uh, um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm I went through uh, like maybe a quarter of the headfirst Python, and I could talk about that if I finish it. So yes, enjoy your day. I hope you learned about the headfirst series and whatever books. Awesome.